so today I would like to uh, talk about uh, Hilbert modular varieties. And, but before I do that, I would like to uh, make some remarks and comments about the Hecke symmetry on the tower of modular varieties and also on the Hecke correspondences because we are going to use, to use some of these properties and I think it may be good to write down some definition so that people can see how, how they come from. And this uh, was also related to questions some people asked. So remarks on Hecke symmetry. Before giving the algebraic definition, let me, uh, let's start with a case that everybody is familiar with, especially go, given what happened in the previous weeks. So, uh, uh, so uh, illustrated in the case of modular curve. So I take the upper half plan, which I denote by H, and then we have the stand, well, everybody has seen them. If I take an N, or think, think about the principal congruence of group of level N, and this, I guess this is usually denoted by Y of N. And as N varies, we get a tower, a modular curve. Okay? And we like to see, so, the, see, so we have, let's say, the, so we think about the system of Y of Ns. And this in our notation will be sort of A1, maybe A11. This is the modular curve. And the claim is that on here, I mean, also on, on any level, any quotient, the uh, auto group of automorphisms is cr pretty small. This is an affine curve, generally of high genus. There's not going to be a lot of automorphisms. And, but if we pass to the whole tower, then I claim that we have a very nice action. Okay? Now, what's the action? Let me just illustrate how SL2 Q will operate. Okay. But the actual group of symmetry is a lot more because when you have SL2 Q operates, then you can have the completion of it operating on it. This is so completion because of so this you have a uh, projective family, then you can have certain kind of uh, topology. I'm not going to sort of write down the details. But let me, let's just sort of look at the action of SL2Q, because this is mo most easily seen uh, in classical terms. Okay? Sorry? Uh, this is essentially the identity completion. This is, this is completion uh, in SL2 of finite ideals over Q. And in fact, so by but this is actually equal. So this is equal. Actually equal to S2. My strong approximation. Uh, okay, so how, how, does it, how, how does one do it? So if I take given gamma, so let's say it's an element of SL2Q. Now I'll say I would like to get something operating on this. So, but we have a tower, so by, def by definition, a projective system. We are going to get a map before, uh, uh, from the projective system to itself. So it suffices to show so if I can have a high enough n, then I can get a map from y capital n to y lower n. And then, so doing it in a compatible way, there, that will give me a map from this projective system, A11, so this is the projection, and then this is not the uh, projection map, but this is a map induced by gamma. And so composition, I get a map given by gamma. And we do it for every gamma, so we get an action. So now, what do we do? So we'll choose, so I, I fix my, fix in the small n, and I choose a capital N such that, uh, I guess, gamma, let me try, gamma of N, capital N, gamma inverse is contained in gamma of N. So this, 
if you choose capital N large enough, this exists. So, 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 uh, exercise existence of such N. Such capital. Okay. Now, then you say, uh, I guess this is pretty easy if I did it right. So if I take an element of Z, uh, let's say tall in H, then we'll think about, uh, uh, let's say U, so uh, take an element UN in capital ga uh, gamma of capital, a uh, small N, I'm sorry, capital N, and I would like to check that if I hit tall with gamma and in comparing it with hit UN of gamma, uh, UN of tall, with gamma, and they land up at the same point in y sub little, what parenthesis little n. Okay, now this should be clear. So we'll check. So this times tall is gamma times u cap u sub n, gamma inverse times gamma inverse. Uh, I'm sorry, gamma tall. So, but this is in gamma of n by our choice, and therefore, therefore we got the required set. So, so okay. So we have seen that we have such action. Okay. Now, the next thing I would like to say is that we can do a similar construction algebraically. Fine. Okay. Now, as you can imagine, there are many ways. They all turn out to be equivalent. So I guess the, the, the uh, so I just have, we have to just choose one way. So I, uh, okay. So I guess the easiest way to see it is to do it in an adaptive way. So we uh, do it, do this uh, for AG1, Jota, which is the projected system of AG1 Ns. And I remind you that N is bigger than or equal to 3, as always, and N is supposed to be prime to P. So this is GCD of these two are equal to 1, because we only look at the prime to P tower. In, since we will be working in characteristic P. Therefore, it's, it's not a good idea to have a level structure at P. That, that creates lots of problems. Now, so, so I guess the, the real thing is that I need to explain what's a point here in this tower. So the description uh, or definition of, let's first recall description of points of points of A, G1, N, for fixed N. That we remember. So a point of G1, N corresponds to, so the way you typically get a point is that you have a G-dimensional, principally polarized abelian variety. I'm not sure how, which, okay. I have a principal polarization. And I have eta. Eta is a level n structure. So here, let's say, so eta zero. What's a level n structure? Uh, I think the best way to think about it is not to use z mod n, z mod n z, but n inverse z mod z, two g copies, and together with the standard symplectic pairing, and we want to rigidify. Uh, sorry the n torsion points together with the pairing on the n torsion points coming from the uh, principal polarization number. Okay. So this, this is one. 
Now, so suppose we have such. Yeah. Yeah, so this is what happened at one level. Now, if we have a point in the projected system, what do we have? We have, a, we have one such point for every level, and these levels are compatible. So, so we see that point, a point in a G1 shoulder. What, what's a typical point? A typical point has, is represented as follows, a lambda as before. So I guess there's a zero here. And now, eta is somehow different. It's a compatible system of things. Now, what's a compatible system of this? One way of writing it is that I take AF. So this is the finite prime to PI at Adele's, whose definition I wrote down before. This is the restricted product of all QLs, L running through all prime numbers, different from P. Okay. And uh, this is the formal completion of, uh, so sorry, the prime, uh, the uh, profinite completion uh, of Z without P part. So this, if you like, so this, another definition is that this is just a product of all ZLs, L different from P. So th th this, so what is this? this? This is, if you like, this is, so this is QL mod ZL, and then direct sum of taking over all L different from P and 2G copy. Oh, uh, there's no 2G, but I'm going to write 2G copy. So that's that. And then I want to, and then on here I have, can have a standard symplectic pairing, and here I mark it with a zero, and now I, so I write, uh, uh, prime to P. So all prime to P torsion points. And on prime to P torsion points, we have But the symplectic pairing then takes values in one copy of this. Just, just like, so if you fix a level, you fix a level n, so you have n inverse z uh, mod z 
two D copies, and then A inverse Z or Z two D copies. And now it can uh, depend, I guess, or you know, uh, let, let it land in N inverse Z over here. And then take the limit. Sorry? Okay. So, so, so we have this. And now, so I guess the easiest way to see this, this action is, is as follows. We, we have, uh, suppose we give ourselves a marking which was written that way I'll ignore the polarization part uh, in writing so I have a zero so no P prime to P now the way one sees that is one first go not to here because it's not easy to have a group operating on this. Now, so I have a gamma, so I have a gamma precomposing it with AF P two D. So now what do we have? We have this map over here, and then we would still like to trace it over here. And now, here's a problem. The, there's a little problem. The problem is that I don't know what to fill in. Here, so here is, it, they are contained in this obedient variety. Okay. Now, the standard way, if you think a little bit, is that so what we are doing is making an isogeny. So I, I'll, try, I'll fill in with an obedient variety B here, so that here, this arrow, it's not a morphism of between the beating variety, but rather this is a prime to P polarization. It's a prime to P quasi isogeny. Meaning that it's the uh, composition of an isogeny whose kernel is, is prime to P and then composed formally with the inverse of another prime to P isogeny. And now here, and you can convince yourself that there is a unique B, well-defined, that is making this diagram to me. And that is the definition of the action. So the action of gamma produces this. And this is a polarization. I'm oh, sorry, this is a level, infinite level structure. So this is the definition. And you can check that this, so if you interpret, so if for instance, in the modular cur curve case, you can, you can see uh, it's, a, it's a good exercise to see that it coincides with the previous description. Okay. Now, uh, why did I do this? Uh, there is a reason, and the reason is, um, I guess or you have seen, uh, uh, in Franz's lecture, I think the first lecture, a explicit definition of Hecker orbit. Okay. So the exercise is to check that using this definition of the tower, you will recover the explicit description of a prime to P Hecker orbit as in Franz's talk. So recover. Francis talk, this is denoted by H upper P at P uh, times X zero if X zero is this point. Okay. Sorry? So, so here it's not, it's not just, you see the group is this. It, this is defined, it's the finite data group operator. But of course, and then, you know, because of strong approximation, you only have to know how the rational elements act. It, it, they are the same. Now, now, so now I will, so before starting uh, uh, the Hilbert modular variety proper, I would like to uh, 
state one, one lemma, in, in fact. But to make it easy to remember and to, to induce you of thinking it uh, to have some importance, I'll give, the, uh, I'll give it a name and just, uh, I guess uh, what I usually call it is, is local stabilizer thing. So if you like, this is a lemma with this as its name. What it says is the following. Suppose I have a closed subscheme of AG, one n. Uh, let's say that it's, uh, it doesn't matter, but let, let's, for simplicity, let's assume that it's reduced, if that makes one feel sad. That, that's not important. Now, so I would like uh, and I will make one assumption that so assume that Z is stable under all prime to T Hecker correspondence. And we'd like to make draw some conclusion out of this assumption. Okay. And, and the uh, kind of assumption one would like to draw is a local one. So I have a point Z0 in it. I'm assuming that it's a closed point. And this, let's say I'm working over FT bar for simplicity. And the the uh, local assumption, uh, the local conclusion I would like to draw is the following. So, before I, so here is a little definition. So here, given the situation, I uh, think about what I call the unitary group attached to a zero So what, what, what is this? So this is, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, no. yeah. Cancel. So what it is, is that it's, I'm just looking at all elements X, which has this form. It essentially, they are, they are prime to T quasi isogenous. So this here, this tensor product is the set of all prime to t quasi isogenous. Okay. And I want to look at those which has the property that if I apply Eosati involution to it and multiply it with itself, I just get identity. So this is a standard uni group, unitary group construction. Th these are the auto, these are the quasi isogenies which are compatible with the polarization. There's nothing else but that. And if you follow this definition, I'll give you leave it to you as an exercise that this is this is exercise that this is the again quote unquote the uh, stabilizer subgroup uh, of X zero inside uh, Hacker correspond Hacker finish. Maybe I have it. So I, I'm not going to prove it, but this is an exercise. Why is this an exercise? If you look at this diagram, which is still here. Now, generally, it's hard. In, in general, you can, this D0 is not A0. It's just not that. Now, but if gamma is a prime to P quasi isogeny that preserves the uh, principal polarization, then B0 
can be taken just to be A0. Clear? Because gamma, so this element gamma also maps to itself. And so you make, so in a topological way, this diagram communicates. And the uh, local stabilizer principle, the lemma, it says that then, then Z localized, so completed at Z0. So I remind you what this is. This is a formal subscheme of this smooth formal scheme, which is the formal spectrum of a power series ring. So then, so the conclusion is that this is stable under the action of U, I'll give it a name, H sub S0, or H sub S0. Why does this make any sense? Uh, it's clear from this construction that this is contained in the automorphism group of a zero, lambda zero, passing to its p divisible group, just by its very definition. Therefore, and you remember that when we des described the uh, deformation theory, formally, just from the definition itself, there is a natural action of this group operating on the deformation space. And that's the deformation space. And this is the statement. That's the end of the statement. I have some comments. Uh, uh, so this looks, I don't know how, how anyone feels, I mean, either too trivial or too abstract. But uh, what I would like to say is, first, this is almost a tautology. So to impress you that this is a tautology, I'll declare that this is a doable exercise. That you can, you can really do just by following the definition. Okay. Now, second is that I'll say that, in fact, this, although th in this form you don't recognize it, but in some other form, you have seen it, so mm, I don't know how, so a long time ago, and you said, uh, then taken it, uh, you have taken it for granted. What's the analogy wh about this statement uh, in, let's say, in differential geometry? In differential geometry, let's suppose, so let me put a small box here, suppose that M is a manifold, you have a V group operating on it, on here, and then you have a submanifold X containing here, which is stable under the stable under G. Um, um, oh, sorry, uh, stable under G. That, that, that's okay. Now, then uh, you like to you like to sort of draw some conclusion from, from about this in local way as as a differential geometry. Okay. So what would you do? You take a point x of, of that. Now, x is not necessarily fixed by the whole group G. Okay. But you can look at the stabilizer subgroup of Gx. So it certainly sends Gx to self. And then, so in differential geometry, you say that, well, so this, uh, so this sends the tangent space of x to itself. But you can say more that it said it sends the jet space to itself. So local jet space, the jet space uh, of X as a subspace of the jet space uh, of X at X, of M at X. Okay. So I'm, I'm sure that you, this is easy. And what, what's this statement? It's exactly the algebraic analog of the previous one. Except one slight difference that we don't have a genuine group action on the modular space, but rather we have something which sort of like a group, and it came from a group in the tower, but after you look at just one fixed level, and you don't see 
the whole group action, you only see, you don't see, you only see the remnants of the group action. But that still allows you to draw this function. Okay. That, that has been a long time. Yes. Sorry? What's the jet space? Uh, the jet space is, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I should, it should talk to you later. This is Algebraically, it's the formal completion. It, that, but that doesn't make you happy. That, that I'll talk to you later. Okay, now, uh, so, but I would like to make one more remark before, before quitting. That is, uh, this looks very stupid, uh, but why does anyone, why is anyone interested in it? Uh, the true reason is that if E and D is compact, so if I have a sub variety stable under the Hecker symmetry, and we'd like to draw any conclusion from it, any conclusion about that assumption, uh, to get any information of D. Uh, I don't know any other way other than this stupid principle. I mean, I, I don't know how to get start. And if any one of you has any way of getting started, I would love to know. But so far, <laughs> That's the only way that I know. Okay. So why is, how to use it? So we'll come back to that later. So how to use this? Right. Because it's obvious that if one attempt to, attempt to use it, I mean, you, you need to get some point whose local stabilizer subgroup denoted by H sub X zero there. It's not trivial. If it is a trivial group, I mean, you have absolutely no information whatsoever. Right? So, so to, to say that, to get to the point that there is some non-trivial local stabilizer subgroup, we need at least to have some abelian variety whose endomorphism range is not too small. Okay, now you have, we have all seen that there is, an M, there is a source of ample supply for such points. What are they? Abelian varieties over finite series. So I apply to x0 over v over x bar. Then the abelian variety of fi over finite fields has sufficiently many complex multiplications. They have lots of endomorphisms. So that group is guaranteed to be, so of, to be sizable. It may not be as, certainly not as big as the whole symplectic group, but it's not trivial. So that's to apply this to that's one. And then we need some way of getting information about, sub about formal subscheme stable under such action. Now in general, again, this is problematic. I think it's a, it's a useful, important for me, maybe not for any other people, but it, it's, it's a question. It's some hard question. It's some question that I would love to be able to solve in general. I can't. But in one situation, so far that we've discussed, there is one situation we can get a lot of information. And this is something I mentioned, I think, at the, uh, two days ago. And this is something I, lo I labeled as local rigidity. I re remind you orally what that says. It says that if you have a formal torus, and if you have a subgroup of, of automorphism of this formal torus, and operating in somehow not totally trivial way, then and you have some formal subscheme, irreducible, reduced, which is stable under this action of this subgroup, then you can draw a conclusion that that subscheme is a formal subtorus. And that's a whole lot of information. And this is something we're going to use, <coughs> uh, probably not today, but on Friday. Now I have used half of the time without touching the uh, main topic I'm supposed to do, which is Hilbert modular variety. So, well, 
So Huber modular varieties, I'll first give the definition. And the definition itself, if we want to make the correct one, somehow is not easy. It's not the obvious one. So, uh, so Huber modular varieties. So, in general, because of beta purples, I need to take a product. So, so Fi is totally real. So these are in the nodes. And then I I'll take L uh, is an invertible uh, OE module. And L plus is a notion of positivity. And this makes some sense. Well, it makes sense because it ought to be totally real or something. And then n is bigger than or equal to 3 uh, prime to p. And now, so Hilbert modular variety, that's denoted by so the input data. So it's indexed by the input data. What it does is that for every scheme, for us, since we are going to, to work over FP bar, why don't I say it's over FP bar? Then it's attached, so it's very much like the case of uh, the uh, Vigo modular varieties AG1N. So this is a abelian scheme. And there's one condition on the dimension is equal to the dimension of the product of totally real fields E. And then there is another piece of information, which is that a bit, this abelian variety admits multiplication by the ring of integers of E. Okay. And then I have a polarization now, this polarization uh, will look a little strange, but it's uh, essentially the same as what we had before. But instead of in pinning down one polarization, we will, pin, we will so define a lot of them. So in fact, what that is, is that it's a homomorphism from this invertible OE module to the symmetric homomorphism Uh, from A to the transpose of A, that's the dual abelian scheme, and, and we want it to be OE linear. I remind you, OE means the follow, symmetric means the following. If you have a homomorphism from A to its dual, then taking the dual, you get another homomorphism from A to its dual. To say that it's symmetric means that that's the same. You get back the original one. And you want such a map, uh, which this, uh, this map, again, is OE linear. And you want that L intersect the positive elements that got mapped to polarization in the previous, that is for locally and the uh, flat topology for every, for is it's induced by ample invert by ample invertible sheet. Okay. Sorry? Oh positive. Oh this is a notion of positivity. So uh, it's just that so you you take uh, L tensor with R and then you want is irreducible yeah, you want so this is not connected. Sorry? Oh, um, I'm sorry, what am I saying? Yeah, so L, uh, sorry, what am I saying? So let, let me say this. So L uh, tensor R is a product, it's a lot of union of R. 
as a non-canonical, so that's R vector space, and then I choose one, uh, one component for each of the vectors. That's a notion of possibility. Sorry? Yeah, yeah, so, um, what am I saying? I'll take, I'll take, uh, let me just write it this way. The, the certainly is a more intelligent way of writing it, but it escaped me at the moment. So I look at this subset and choose one, you will do one connected component of it at a time. And that's a notion of possibility. So, so spinning down, this is in, in a non-canonical way, so choosing a strict ideal class B. Choosing an element in the strict ideal class B. Okay, so that's, that's and then, so the N is eta, that's a uh, level N structure, and I'm not going to write it down, so you can, it's written down in the notes, so you can pin down the effect of point of level N. Okay, and, but this is not N of it. So that's, that's something one has to be careful about. So if anyone is interested in getting a, a precise defi uh, definition, so there's one condition, uh, maybe I should go forward. The condition, in some sense, says that locally, there is the principal polarization sitting inside L. Sitting inside all possible polarizations. There's a lot of them. But it's not really the infinite collection of data because once we have one, we can multiply it with a totally positive element to get another polarization. If we don't want the positivity condition, so from every symmetric element, we multiply it by some element of the uh, ring of integers of E, you get another symmetric isomorphism, a symmetric homomorphism. Okay. So this condition that we need is abstractly says that this is an isomorphism. Okay. Now this, what this means so is that, so it, it's easy to say what that is abstractly. Abstractly, you, you, I'm thinking of A as a sheaf. Now, so I, in the, cat, in the uh, category of sheaves, I tensor, tensor A over OE. So A is a sheaf with actions by OE. I tensor it with L. I get something. And because the way so L is defined, there's a natural map. And one requires that this is an isomorphism. So what that means is that locally, over the base, you can find some element of lambda such that lambda induces an isomorphism from A to a skew. That's all it means. But so because of this local invertibility, we want to we want to pin it down. That's because well, if you don't, you get a large number of irreducible components of the modulus. So that's that. Now this condition is due to Zelenia. Yeah, a, a paper in Zelenia and Akapas. So uh, maybe, maybe it's good to, talk, uh, to tell some history about this. So, uh, and authorities in the room can correct me. I mean, I'm not certain, uh, certainly not the authority in, about the history, but as as far as I know, the reason that people got seriously interested in the modular skiing in an arithmetic way is because the linear realized some, some year, I don't know exactly when, uh, certainly before the, before the uh, early 1970s, the linear realized that one can construct piadic L functions over totally, totally real field. There is a catch that he needs certain irreducibility statements. He needs actually two of them. One is that the moduli scheme itself is irreducible. And the other is that the so-called Igusa towers, which is you will look at the ordinary locus, and then you look at all possible trivializations, 
and it still is irreducible. So it meets these two. Now these two uh, were resolved by two people. The irreducibility was, uh, problem was resolved by Rappaport in his thesis uh, in published in the Compositio. Uh, I don't remember the exact, maybe 1976, plus minus two. Uh, it's in the notes. Uh, and the uh, other irreducibility of the Gusa Tower, which is a statement modulo the irreducibility of the moduli space in characteristic P was resolved by Ribet. And then so we're combining these two, so Selene and Ribet wrote, down, wrote a paper uh, about the construction of p-adic L functions, construction of the, uh, uh, and then the interpolation properties and so on and so forth. There is a catch. The catch was that in the na late 1980s, uh, George Pappas, who was a graduate student at Columbia at the time, uh, was trying to do something about modular varieties. And then he was playing with it. And then he realized that the, uh, there is a problem in uh, Rappaport's definition, which is not this. The, def the problem was that there are certain points that got missed in Rappaport's condition. So Rappaport's condition is instead of this condition, he requires that the Lie algebra of A over S, which is, uh, is an o, which is obviously an OS tensor OE module. And now, so if I take, let's say over a point, let's say even over perfect field or algebraically closed field, that doesn't matter. So then I have pay over that. He requires that this is a free, a free, this uh, o K tensor OE module of rank one. It's certainly that module, and <coughs> the size match. The problem was that it doesn't, <coughs> if we impose this condition, it misses out certain point so that you can have a family going, doesn't, the abelian variety doesn't need to degenerate, but then from some, some, the generic points satisfy this condition, but the special point doesn't. There's no way to, to fix that. Okay. So in Rappaport's thesis, or what, what, what he did was he constructed a good compactification. He compactified it at a boundary, the four order. And then the proof was, or the proving uh, irreducibility, you invoke that, well, the, the uh, spe uh, generic fiber is smooth. There's nothing bad happening in characteristic P, and therefore conclude that it's irre irreducible. But th for that, you need, one needs that the closed fiber is proper. And but not only proper, so it doesn't have too bad singularity. One needs some condition of be about being unibranch. Since one's missing some point, the proof developed a hope, a serious hope, because a lot of other papers depend on it. And, and that, that, that's sort of about 10 years after that. And, but, but then the linear, of course, and it took him little time figuring out what, what the right condition was and fixed that, that. So this is the condition. Now let me tell you a few properties about this. So, so now this is serious black boxes, lots of them. One, is that, so, oh, by the way, I should first remark that N, E, so, so L, L plus, but by this very definition, it's just a product. If you have a product of totally real fields, then so a, a line, an invertible sheet decomposes, and then notion of positivity also decomposes. So this is, in generally, this is not a problem. So that's that. So let's assume, uh, so that's a remark, but it's not, uh, yeah, it's not important. So the point is that one is that over at P, uh, let's say N, E, L, L plus N over at P bar, 
In general, it's singular. There are singularities. But it has uh, local complete, uh, has local complete intersections. Every, every point, that's the worst it can happen. Two is that uh, co-dimension of singu uh, singular locus is at least two. Now three is that it's irreducible. And four, four is something that we are not going to use. And we are not going to use that has, uh, so singularity has high co-dimension. We, uh, we are not going to use, it has local complete intersection property. We do need this property later. And so, um, and then, so uh, I'll say that N E L L plus N has a stratification by Lie type. So let me tell let me tell you briefly what uh, what this means. So suppose I have an abelian variety with real multiplication uh, by E uh, satisfying those conditions. So suppose I have K over K and iota lambda and uh, eta K. But eta is not in K. Now we can look at the Duran, uh, first Duran homology of A over K. What can we say about it as a module over, over let's say K K has characteristic P, answer only. What we know is that this is free of rank two. It's free, a free module of rank two. And this is something you can do by what you know now. Although I don't claim that this is trivial. It requires a little bit of thinking. But this we know. Now, we have, because we have a hard filtration. You remember the hard filtration we wrote down before. Therefore, if we write, think about it in the Grothendieck group of modules over this ring, this class is equal to the Lie algebra of A together with the Lie algebra of the dual of A. There is another dual, but dual doesn't change it. So just like that. This comes from the hard filtration. Then, but these two are the same because, because of the condition we require. So there is some locally some lambda making, producing an isomorphism from A to its dual, compatible with the OEF. So the conclusion is that this so is equal to the class of K tensor OE in the growth in D group, I guess the standard notation is K prime of OE tensor K. So this condition, this it's not necessarily free, but if you pass to the growth in D group, it's correct. Now, there are some conditions, so there is also, we know that the filtration, if you look at the filtration, it has to be maximal isotropic. That's a property because it locally has, has a principal polarization. So using that, we can think about the type of this Lie algebra as not an element in the uh, Golden D group because we know what that is, but rather what that actually is by its isomorphism type. There are only a finite number of them because uh, let's assume that K is, is algebraically closed. Then, by an exercise that all of you can do, this is a special case of the 
structure theorem for modules over principal ideal domains. There you, you, you know that there are only a finite number of isomorphism types of this Lie algebra. And you can stratify the moduli space using the isomorphism type of that Lie algebra. That produces a stratification, one of its, one of its uh, the largest stratum is exactly the, uh, the non-singular stratum. And the, all the others you can analyze. Okay. Now I have about five minutes left, I think. And let me quickly go see which ones are more important. Okay, here's one thing I think. So I was planning to say something about how to prove the statement about singularities but I don't think I have any time. But I think the following may be uh, useful to see. So first, I would like to state a general principle. So, so let's, in simplicity, let's say F, it, there's just one totally real field. Okay, so now I have an abelian variety A, and I have eta and lambda, so as before, F such a thing. A zero. Okay. And we like to understand its deformation theory. Okay. Now, and by Serre-Tay theory, we know how to how to compute its deformation theory. So deformation theory, so we, we know that it's the same as deforming its Borsati tables. Right? Now, the, the, th the point is this. So if we think about the deformation theory of a zero iota zero, lambda zero. L let's forget about iota depolarization for a while. It doesn't really matter. So let's just think about this for, for simplicity. Now we know that this is the same as deforming its Borsati table on the oh, iota. Okay. Now the point is that the Borsati tape group decomposes into a direct product. Why? Because if I take the Borsati tape group, now I have OF. OF, if I tensor it with VP, we know that it decomposes into the product of OF sub P, P divided by. So every place, so you can look at various places, if there are more than one prime in F above P for every one, you get the Reynolds integers and you have this canonical decomposition. Now in this decomposition, you have one irreducible Eden potent for every place above P. So in fact, every Barsati tape group above, uh, with endomorphism by, by o, OF in this situation, so it will decompose into a product by using this Eden potent. So therefore, we have Canonical decomposition of the Borsati Tay group of, of, of the deformation space into the deformation space of the torsion points using powers of various primes above P, precisely because of this decomposition. Okay. Is it clear? Let me say it orally. So, so the reason is, suppose you have an A over R, R is an Artinian local ring that decomposes. Now we know that, so A infinity, uh, B infinity, so we have A infinity over R. But A infinity over R, again using this decomposition, it decomposes into the product of A over P infinity over R. Each one is a deformation. So it comes for free. We have this decomposition. So that's one. So at any point, so although there is, we certainly shouldn't expect to have any decomposition of the modulized space itself. It doesn't exist. But locally, it looks like it has a decomposition. Okay. Now, for future purpose, I would like to give another exercise, uh, which is pushing this fact a little further. How do we, so in other words, I would like to globalize it. 
how do we make such a statement global? This is a point by point statement, right? Now, but if I have, I'll just write and instead, so I'll omit all these indices. Now, the claim is this, that if I move these deformation spaces on the moduli space, I'll keep these decomposition. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, Golden Beak taught us that if we want to think about for infinitesimal properties, we should just look at, or we, can we know that we can embed, embed this uh, M, this modular space, diagonally into its product with self. And then you formally complete along the diagonal. So that way you get all the, uh, what I call jet spaces in an algebraic way. So and then moves globally. This is a formal scheme. It has projection. You can use either of the two projections. Let, let's say I use the first projection. So this is the family of, so to speak, tangent cones. And then the statement is that this decomposes into as a cone. In, it decomposes into a product. This is a fiber product over N. And I, I, I declare that this is an extra space. What, what does one use? Nothing but shear take theory. And this is where how one, so looking at such a statement, it actually there's a global meaning, and this we will use next time. And, uh, okay, I'll, I should stop. Thank you. <laughs>